Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Uh, this is going to be a quick video demo of the um, Rexus sounding rocket add-on by uh, Smarly. So thank you for putting this together. Uh, this is a follow-up video to the uh, rock-on video that I went to. And remember, we tried to simulate a sounding rocket, but were unsuccessful because I didn't know of this uh, add-on's existence. So, um, what we are going to do is launch this sounding rocket, and uh, it's a little bit different than the one that I, that my stuff was on. My stuff was aboard a um, Terrier Improved Orion, and this is a Rexus, which isn't nearly as powerful, so we're only going to 90, 95 kilometers, and the, um, the Terrier Improved Orion went to 118 kilometers. I have everything in terms of the uh, launch uh, setup. Um, the azimuth and elevation are programmed in here at um, 125 degrees and uh, the elevation is going to be 87 degrees which is what the actual flight elevation was. And uh, I have it here at Wallops Island. All of these facilities are actually accurate uh, and I can't even tell you what some of these buildings are. Like I know this this here is a fire station, and that's a launch support services building. And um, actually, there uh, this is the um, what do you call that? It's where the rockets are built up for um, orbital, and it's way taller than that in real life. So they ought to fix that. Um, so we were actually watching the rocket from right here and if you see my video uh, you will actually be able to see it um, this gray building which is actually stuck in here is actually a barn for this launch facility and it rolls back so that's a little bit off um, and you can see here there's like a barn for it right here and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're going to launch this launch is immediate and we will accelerate um, pretty darn close uh, so let me explain the rocket. This is a one-stage rocket, whereas the Terry Improved Orion was two stages. So here is the rocket motor, and the um, parachute module is in here. Here's the nose cone, obviously, and the uh, science payloads are in here, which is just about what was the case with ours, except instead of having four segments, we had two long segments. And um, well, if you don't remember that video, I suggest you look at it. Here we're going to um, plot several parameters um, to do with the flight. So we're going to go ahead and start that off now. And I'm going to count down from 10. We're going to launch, and uh, you will see things go very high. And uh, unfortunately, we won't go to the full altitude or range, but that's okay. So, um, without anything else, uh, we're going to start the countdown at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch. And very quickly, we've already gone through the speed of sound. We show capture and hard dock. Congratulations. In real life, our rocket was spinning much faster than this is now, uh, and it will continue to spin into space. And you can see now we're already, um, the stars are already uh, becoming visible. So I have to figure out what this means here. Now, for some reason, the rocket despins itself. Uh, and on our actual sounding rocket, it had not despun. You can see we're already far above the pad. Uh, and we're pretty much in space now. Um, I have absolutely no clue what this stuff is doing. And I can't really read it. So I'm going to stop it because that's just useless information. Okay. Undocking confirmed. So that was automatic Undocking confirmed. payload separation. Here is the engine unit. I'm not sure why it has the long things there, but 
uh, and the nose cone has jettisoned as well. So this is the science module where the uh, things, where the uh, experiments are carried out. And this is the parachute module. You can actually see the red parachute inside here. Um, it has despun. Oh, and I see now we're actually in space. It has despun. I'm not sure why it has, because in real life, as uh, gotten from our data points, uh, we're not going to, yeah, only 88 kilometers. We're about to be at Apogee. In real life, we'd still be spinning at six times per second. Meanwhile, um, here is Cape Cod over here, and Providence and Boston are up here. Uh, here is New York City. Manhattan is right there. Uh, Philadelphia, Wilmington, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Richmond, uh, Newport News, Hampton Roads, Norfolk, Charlotte, uh, Charlestown, or Charles, Charleston, and we can see all the way out to Ohio, and uh, there's no way we can see, there's no way we can see all the way out to Indianapolis. Oh my gosh, we can see all the way out to Indiana. That's crazy. So I'm still amazed that I had sent my um, stuff up here. Uh, <laughs> I built a uh, science payload with a few friends and was able to fly it up here, um, courtesy of NASA and the Colorado Space Grant Consortium. And um, I was able to send a, a Lego block all the way up here. And <laughs> I'm just amazed that I have this Lego brick and I can say, I flew this here. It's really been here where the sky is black during midday and we can see planets like Venus and Saturn, Mercury and Uranus. It's all amazing. And, um, well, we're going to get ready for re-entry and re-entry is a very quick process. And then uh, the parachute deploys and we pull some really high G maneuvers as we decelerate from the parachute. So we're at about 150,000 feet right now. And any minute now you will start hearing re-entry and it will get very, very loud. And it's indicated by our science data that it did get nuts. And here it is. See very quickly the sky is changing color to bright. We're already at uh, 30,000 feet, 15,000 feet, and the parachute is about you to deploy. Woo! And right like that, our parachute has deployed. And <laughs> wow, I'm gonna have to check those um, G forces because that was very fast. That was almost instantaneous. And we're already at about 7,000 feet. Let's see if we can find the other um, elements of the rocket, uh, which are not coming down on a parachute. So you can already see um, we've gone far into the atmosphere now, so we've lost all visibility uh, to the North American continent other than Wallops Island, which will probably disappear because we're 21 kilometers downrange. Uh, in, in our actual launch of the um, Terrier Improved Orion, uh, we were 43, um, 43 miles downrange or about 73 kilometers from what I recall. Uh, so yeah, we were considerably further downrange Last time I ran the test of this um, engine, the uh, all of the components, all three components, the engine, the nose cone, and this landed uh, within a kilometer of each other. One thousand. So that's handy for the recovery vehicle. And we're at 
It's like about 600 meters. So that's about one mile in altitude. 500. Wait, I said 400. 600. Sorry, that's half a mile in altitude. 300. 200. Okay, uh, here comes splashdown. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And there is splashdown. So we're now in the ocean, uh, and it's done that nice little uh, deflate, deflation. I have to say, um, Snarly's really done a nice job with this uh, add-on, and I'm really impressed with the amount that it simulates. Uh, the only thing that, in my opinion, is wrong with it is it's not the same as the Terrier Improved Orion, but that's just me being biased because I've actually... Um, had the honor of being able to fly some stuff on the Terrier Improved Orion. And um, I can't see it right now, but uh, we should be relatively near the um, relatively near the other, ah oh, yeah, there it is, MTR. So let's just go ahead and there, are, there's the other one as well. Um, yeah, so about there it is. So there's the engine, and it's about 300 meters away, which is good. That's about um, 300 yards. So that's, of course, very good. Let's see if we can find the other one. It's a little bit picky as to what displays and what doesn't. I think it was in this direction, so let's see if we can get it to display. If not, that's okay. Okay, well, it doesn't want to display, but that's okay. Uh, 300 to 600 meters. Yeah, so um, the full pictures of the, um, what was that? The full pictures of the, um, yeah, and as, as expected, all but ocean. So, uh, the pictures have been posted to the Colorado Space Grant Consortium website, so if you want to see pictures and videos, they even have slow motion videos of our rocket taking off. If you guys are interested in those, um, then you can go to the Colorado Space Grant Consortium website slash rock on 2014. And you want to go to, I believe it's data and materials. And there's a big long list of um, everything on there. If you're curious to know um, what data I was able to get on our um, science payload, um, I suggest going to table 15, the PDF, and it will show you um, the built data built by NASA scientists, so you know it's right, uh, of all the stuff we've collected, and it has the gyros, the accelerometers, the Geiger counters, the pressure, the temperature, the humidity, and some stuff that I'm forgetting about. So I recommend you guys check those out because they're posted. And uh, I will see you guys next time for the building of the B-1 Lancer um, carrier craft uh, on the Norsden Land Teniso, uh, episode 32. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.